Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Kendra and today I have compiled for you a video of all my spindle DIYs. Some from last year, some from this year. So sit back, watch, enjoy, and let me know if you saw the original video they were in or if this is your first time seeing it. Let's get started. We're gonna start this DIY with a box of spindles that were given to me. They were the little rungs on some old chairs and a friend had cut them off because she was gonna throw away the chairs and she saved them for me. So I'm just going through them and looking at them and deciding which ones I want to use for this project because there were several different styles. So these are the ones that I chose. So I just gave them a good cleaning. I sprayed them down. I used a little scrub brush and an old toothbrush, a couple different kinds of cleaners just to get all that uh, grime off of them and scrubbed them down, rinsed them off, let them dry really good. And then I took them in. I, kept, I used this aluminum um, cookie sheet from Dollar Tree. It helped me out a lot with these. So I'm gonna use these DIY paints and I'm trying to decide that blue. I don't like that blue. That blue's too light. So I decided to mix my own color. So I'm using Hay Sailor and I mix a little bit of something else in there. I'm not sure what color paint this was. It looks a little bit like White Swan by DIY. So I'm just gonna make my own custom color. As crafters, we do this all the time. Love the way this color turned out. So I'm going to do two of each spindle, the ones that are alike in the same colors. So I'm gonna do these plain straight ones in this blue color. And most of them I had to give two, sometimes three coats. That first coat wasn't bad, I'm trying to show you, but it's not really focusing in. Um, but yeah, two coats, two coats are good. Now I'm gonna use Old 57, which is a beautiful color. Um, I had never opened it, and so it has the name on the side. Once I split it open, you can't see it that great, so I write it on a little sticky label and put it on the top. So it helps me be able to see it. So this one didn't cover as well. So I did have to do, I can't remember if I did two or three coats. When I, I use my heat gun to dry in between coats. Then we're gonna use Cowgirl Coral, which is a beautiful coral color. And we're gonna do two of them in that color. So I just painted until I got the coverage that I wanted. When I uploaded this video the first time, I didn't have any voiceover on it. I uploaded the entire video without the voiceover. So I had to come back and do the voiceover for this video. So it's been a while since I did it, so I'm not sure I remember exactly what all I did. So here we go. So here's some yellow acrylic paint, and it's a matte acrylic paint because I didn't have, at that time, a DIY paint in yellow. So it didn't cover very good at all. You can see that the chalk paints, those DIY clay-based paints, did a much, much better job. I do think at this point I mixed a color of, um, or maybe I mixed a little something in there to make it a little more golden. Maybe that's what I did. Can't remember. Anyway, make them the color you want if you try to do a project like this. Now we're gonna take some DIY clear wax and it's best not to double dip into the jar because it is a natural product and it can get, um, you know, debris and what have you in there. And we just wanna keep that little jar nice and clean so it lasts good. So I'm using this brush to apply because I can get it down in all the little um, nooks and crannies and crevices. And I'm just putting a good coat of the clear wax on and just let it sit while I do the rest of them and then buff it off with an old white piece of a t-shirt. Then I take the dark wax and just put it really concentrate on all those, um, I don't know, I'm calling them crevices. Yeah, so it looks like, you know, some dirt got in there and we just wiped it off and didn't wipe 
the, the inside. So we just want it to look a little bit aged, or I do. You can totally not do this step if you don't like this look. So I just kept adding until I got the look that I wanted. Love that. I love how that looks. So I did that to all of my pieces. Now, this was the back. So the back of the chair, I think I pop in a picture, maybe, maybe not. So the back of the chair had these rungs across. When you sit down, this is, you know, where, you, where your back would sit. And I had been dying to use one of these in a project, and this was perfect for this project. So I'm painting it with, I'm guessing this is probably white swan. It looks like white swan. It's a little bit of an off-white, but not with a creamy yellow base. So I love it. So gave that a good coat, dried it with my heat gun. And then I took weathered wood. I believe this is weathered wood. And I gave it a coat of paint. Now I'm gonna take that white swan again and go back over it again. I think the best I remember is I might have been having a little bleed through on that, so I decided to do the brown to cover that up. Now I'm gonna take my IOD molds. I get them from Elsie over at twochickshomeandmarket.com and if you want to go there for your first time, you can get 10% off your order. Now, I tried this Dollar Tree clay, and it did not work for me. It was sticky. It was gummy. It would not cooperate. I couldn't get it to mash down in there. Every time I tried to move it, it just, it was so wet and sticky. And then, oh, I don't know. Just watch. So it looks like I can get it in there okay, but then when I try to get it out, oh, that was a whole nother story. Okay, here we go. Lay it down, roll it out. That's not working. Let's just see if we can pull it out. Yeah, and then it fell all to pieces. I was done. So then I got out my other air dry clay that I have. I believe this one is Crayola brand. It is not the best clay to work with, but I purchased a big, huge tub of it. I probably should take it to church and let the kids use it <laughs> because it is not that great, but it worked fine. It does shrink and crack a lot. So here's my little birdie. I think it turned out cute. I love the IOD molds because they have so much detail and even when you paint them. So his little wing broke off. I just added a little bit of water to it and um, added and, and mended it. Now I'm just cleaning up the edges a little bit. Now I'm gonna use this um, Aileen's Tacky Glue, and it worked really good to adhere these little birds onto the top part of our wind chime. I don't think I ever mentioned that we're making a wind chime. So we're gonna put this big bird, or the bigger bird in the middle. Make sure it gets in there good. And then I'm gonna put those two little birds, one on each side. And then I'm just clean, using a little paintbrush to kind of clean up the edges, get all that glue off, smooth it out. Then I'm gonna take that white swan again and I'm gonna paint over the birds so that they match. I did this while the birds were still, the clay was still damp. I had heard some creators say that keeps it from cracking and shrinking, but mine still did. So now that it's completely dry, we're gonna take that same brush and that same clear wax, and we are going to put a coat of clear wax on. Because I wanted to dark wax it just a tiny bit, but I didn't want that much on there, so yeah, and I am going to put this outside and I should have uh, put a coat of polycrylic on it 
before I white wax before I did all the waxing. But you know, I've had it outside and never put any polycrylic on it and it still looks great and it's been rained on and the wind has blown and everything. So now I'm going to take this teeny tiny little drill bit and I'm going to drill a hole in the top of each one of these spindles. This is going to be my pilot hole because I'm going to put some of these little eye hooks to attach them to that back rung. I got this little pack on Amazon and I believe that it is uh, linked in the description box below if you're interested in purchasing some of these they do come in handy a lot of different crafts so I just screwed that down in there it screwed down in there easily because I had made that pilot hole I also did the same thing on that back I did not get that on camera and now here we go we're going to attach the spindles to our base our top you can see I'm showing you how it all cracked but um, it's going to be outside. It's supposed to look a little rustic. I'm okay with it. Now, I've got this. Um, yeah, it's fishing. It's from my, my husband decided this nylon um, stuff would be the best. And he uses it when he goes fishing. So, he got this for me. So, I'm just going to burn the ends. It's Because it's nylon, it's kind of plastic. And it you saw how it was unraveling this will just melt the ends together so it was really hard for me to get this on camera but i'm going to try really hard to show you how i attached these and you can attach them however you want it's not really rocket science but i wanted them to hang a certain way so this is how i did it and i tried to make them where they were pretty much all the same length you can see i'm struggling a little bit i'm always going to show you all the struggles because everything is not always just that easy there and then i usually drop a little drop of super glue in those knots so that they don't come undone yep there i go and trim off all the excess little sprigs melt it so it doesn't fray and then here they are all done I'm going back in making sure they're all melted and so they're not going to come undone try not to catch the cow the cottage on fire <laughs> so now we need something across the top to hang it with so i decided to use this same this same string nylon fishing string and it's um my husband uses it when he does trot lines so he attaches i don't know he attaches something that, that i don't know google it i know what he does but i can't d explain it to you just google it and here is the finished product it looks really blue in that evening sunlight but it is white so i have this spindle in my stash and this is more of a trash to treasure I, but i decided to throw it in because it turned out really pretty and i had that candle jar so this candle jar had a, you know i took all the wax out cleaned it up and i'm using this diy white wax and i'm just going to layer it on i'm putting it on and then i kind of let it dry a little bit and then i put another layer on and let it dry a little bit. And I just kept doing that until I got the look I wanted. I wanted it to look a little bit, I don't know if frosted is the right look I was going for, but I had a look in my head. You know how you just have a look in your head that you're going for and you know when you achieve it. Well, I achieved it. Now I'm just gonna paint this little piece of a spindle. I just cut it the length that I wanted it and um, then I'm going to sand it because I want it to be distressed. So I've got my little sanding block and I'm just randomly sanding some of it off. Some of it all the way down to back down to the wood and some of it not so much. Then I'm going to use the DIY clear wax on the spindle to seal it. And back with my little piece of t-shirt, old white 
undershirt of my husband's that I cut up into small pieces to buff with or to clean with or whatever I need it for. And now I'm going to use some E6000 and some hot glue to adhere this spindle to my glass candle jar. I'm going to put it right in the middle. It's easy to see because it's clear. And I think this turned out so pretty. Let me know what you think. with some spindles that I took out to the shop and I cut them to look like these little pedestals. I'm gonna use some sawmill gravy by Dixie Belle and I'm just gonna give them a good coat, one coat. I did, I'm gonna make three of these in this video and all three I did the same thing with. One of them did not get recorded, so I'm just telling you right now, I did it with all three of them. Now, I thought this would be a great idea to take some white wax and just kind of smear it on this terracotta pot, but guess what? It's very porous and it absorbed that wax in kind of a weird way. So I should have just stopped here and just stopped. I don't know what else to say. Oh, but no. I had to just keep trying and just keep trying and I kept adding different layers of paint thinking I was going to make it look old and like it'd been, you know, used and reused, but I just made a mess. And then I decided I was gonna take some of Anita's acrylic paint in terracotta and paint it and start over. And I ended up breaking the pot. So I started over and just whitewashed one with some white paint, you'll see that later. So I'm taking some dark wax by DIY wax. I get these waxes from Brie, from Upcycle by Brie, and she has a website, upcyclebybrie.com. It's linked in my description box in every video, and I love it. I use the dark wax, the clear wax, and the white wax a lot. I'm using the clear wax now to just kind of blend this in. I love this combination of sawmill gravy and the dark wax. And I'm gonna put that little pot on top of that little pedestal. Now I got these little styrofoam um, eggs on clearance last year at Dollar General and I'm just gonna give them a little coat of some paint. They were a little too bright for me. Now I'm gonna glue these two little pieces together. I didn't show you that I uh, did this terracotta paint wasn't as porous this terracotta pot wasn't as porous so I was able just to use the white wax on it it did not come from Dollar Tree it was just in my stash from probably someone gave it to me and so it did take the white wax very nicely and so that's what I did to this little pot now I'm just taking some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree and I'm just making a little nest and I'm gonna put these little eggs in there and I do hot glue them into the nest but I did not hot glue the nest into the pot just in case I wanted to use the pot further down the road for a different DIY. Okay, now I decided those little pots would not stand up on their own. So I had these little round tags. They came in a pack somewhere I'd gotten them. You could use any kind of little round something. I glued two of them together to make it a little thicker and I filled the holes with some wood putty. I sanded it down and now I'm gonna paint them with that sawmill gravy. And I'm gonna do the same thing with everything that I use as the base in this video. And then once it's completely dry, I get back out my dark DIY wax and just give it a little dry brush around there. Um, you know, make it match. Look a little old and worn, a little bit aged. And then I take a cloth and I wipe it off. And then I dump the bird nest out. <laughs> but I use a little wood glue. That I get the super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree. It works fantastic. And I'm just going to glue that right down in the middle of that little wood disc. I You saw me put a little hot glue in there for a quick hold. And then the uh, wood glue is going to be for a permanent hold. And this is how that little pot on the pedestal turned out. I think it turned out adorable. 
Now here are all those spindles. Look, this is the back of my husband's truck. This is in the shop. And we are going to use that other little pedestal that we made from a spindle. I have this little birdhouse I got on clearance at Joann's. Had it in my stash. And then this beautiful little pink color from Dixie Bell. I'm not sure what the name of it is, but it's one of their pinks. They have several pinks, but this is the one that I chose. And I'm not disappointed. And then there's that sawmill gravy I'm going to put on the roof. And... I always say that weird roof 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 I don't know anyway I'm gonna take that hanger off because it got in my way number one and then when I go to paint that little knob on top it really was gonna be in the way so here we go just painting the roof and then we're gonna paint that little knob on top white this is just white chalk paint and now I'm going to take that white chalk paint and it's not really dry brush, but kind of is dry brush. I'm just not really painting a heavy coat on that pink. And then I'm really kind of just dry brushing that with what was left in my brush on the, on the top. And now I'm going to take that dark wax, almost just what was left on my spatula from earlier. And going to just put a little bit on there and then just blend it in with my little soft um, scrap of a t-shirt now same with this little pedestal I'm just kind of putting some yeah, some of that wax on there wiping it off I uh, think that I did some white dry brushing on there as well and now I'm just going to sand it to distress it a little bit and distress this little house this little burn house and I used a really um, coarse grit the texture of this birdhouse the kind of wood it was was almost like driftwood and so it was a little hard to distress but I really liked how this got in there and made almost like little grooves in it so I really liked the, the way that it turned out now I'm going to put a hanger back up on top only because there was already that hole in there and I just felt like it needed that piece of twine back in there. So here I go struggling to figure out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it. So I just tie that knot back in there. Uh, you can see from the last little house, little DIY to this DIY, I got the band-aid off my finger because I had a casualty at work and snipped my finger while I was cutting hair. So I don't know if this was the day before or this must have been the day before because that didn't heal up that quickly. As you know, oftentimes it takes several days to record videos. Okay, now I got this little uh, one finished and it wasn't level on the bottom so I just stuck some masking tape on there and to get it level and I'm just going to do the same thing I did on the other one. Same song, second verse, same as the first. And there is that little baby finished, and I think that is so cute. It's small. It'll be cute on a tear tray. I put it on a book stack. I just think it's beautiful. Now our third and final pedestal planter. This is the one I just whitewashed, and I did the base of it the same way, except the bottom was one of those little... Uh, wood rounds I think you can get them at Walmart or Hobby Lobby I believe I got those in a three pack at Hobby Lobby now I'm gonna take this ribbon from Dollar Tree it's kind of a cloth ribbon I absolutely love this ribbon and I'm gonna just put it around there and you see that I only put the glue at the top because on a round surface it is kind of weird to put ribbon on and it kind of makes it look like a little skirt on there I think it looks really cute. Then I'm just going to put a little piece of twine um, on top of that. Put a little twine bow. I'm going to fill this with some greenery and some lavender that I got off Amazon. And I think it is just beautiful. I hope that you are enjoying all these spindle DIYs. If you are new to my channel, my name is Kendra and you're watching Late Night Creations. 
I'm so glad that you decided to watch today. And my returning subscribers, thank you so much for your support. It means a lot. So now, make sure that you've given this video a thumbs up. Make sure that you comment and subscribe. Now let's get back to the video. I have this wonderful wood that my cousin brought to me that she had left over when they remodeled her house. She had a remodel in her bathroom and this was the wood that was behind her shower. And then I, of course, I still have some of these spindles. So I'm gonna pick a few of these out that are all matching and we're going to paint them. Two red, two white, two blue. So I use the Marquee by DIY and Hey Sailor by DIY and I believe I used White Swan by DIY. I only had to do one coat of the red, one coat of the blue, and I had to do, I tried to do a coat of the white, a couple coats of the white, it just wasn't covering, so I ended up doing a coat of, I believe, maybe faded burlap, and then did another coat of white on top, and that worked out better, so um, hindsight, I would have just done a darker coat on this brown, and then done the white on top. And I would have gotten a lot better coverage. You can see that the coverage on this white is not that great. Then I took some white wax by DIY. And I'm just going to show you on one of these to save time. But I took um, a stencil brush and chippy brush. You could use any of those. And I just put it on there pretty heavy. And then I took an old piece of white soft cloth. It's an old t-shirt. I use in all my DIYs. And I just wiped back however much I wanted to. You can wipe back as much or as little as you want. And with this one, I tried to mix a little bit of the faded burlap paint into the clear wax. And it didn't work real well for me. So I, um, I just did it, but it didn't really do that much for me. I'm going to paint these three little wooden stars white. And then I'm going to take this piece of wood that I cut to the desired length that I want. And I'm crossing my fingers to hope that when I drill a hole in this, it doesn't split the wood. And it did not. Now I'm going to use this wire that I got at either Home Depot or Lowe's. And it comes with its own little cutter built in, which is amazing. And see if that will fit through that hole the way that I want it to. And it does. So I'm just going to drill enough holes across the bottom there for however many spindles I have, which is six. I had pre-measured and marked where I wanted those holes, by the way. I wasn't just drilling those willy-nilly. Now that I've finished that, I'm going to drill some... I'm gonna, well, I'm going to lay these out how I want them. And I think they turned out so pretty. And my cousin suggested that I do these every other one upside down. And I really like the way that looks. But I was afraid if I tried to drill holes in that little thin end that it might not work so good. So I decided to use the thicker end and I'm going to drill a hole in each one of them. And I measured from the end so that I could get the hole in the same place on all of them. So all six of the spindles got holes drilled in the end. And now I'm going to attach them. This was a little bit tricky, but once I got the hang of it, it went pretty pretty easy. So I'm using that wire that I got. I'd had that in my stash for quite a while. I'd used it as a, at a vacation Bible school craft. So I had some left over. It's been in my stash. And I just decided to use it for this project. And it worked out great. So I'm just looping it through there and twisting it really good. Making sure that the little twisted part stays on the back side. It will try to go through that hole and, and get on the front. But I kept them all on the back side. And measuring to make sure they're not that they're all the same length. If they're not, you just... Twist or untwist that a little bit more to make them the same length. Now we're going to make a hanger. I took this heavier gauge wire that came in a similar roll as the other one. And I took it, it was silver. I took it outside. I spray painted it with some brown and some copper spray paint to make it look like it was an old piece of wire. I wish I would have had some old baling wire, um, but I didn't. So we're just going to use this and it turns out good. So I'm just going to show you on one side, not both sides because I want to, don't want this video to be super long, how I twisted that in. And if you have a better way to do it, just do it how you do it. I did mess up the paint a little bit when I was using the pliers on it, so I just took a little bit of paint and daubed it on there to fix it. Now these little wooden white stars that I got on Amazon, I'm just, that I already painted white, 
I'm going to just glue them to this wood. This wood piece, I didn't do anything to it. I left it just like she brought it to me. I wiped it down with a cloth to get all the dust off of it. Other than that, I just left it like that. Nail holes and all. Now I'm going to flip it over because I don't want that wire to scratch my wall. I'm going to take a piece of this, um, you know, it's that muslin drop cloth that you use for painting. And I'm going to just, I cut a little strip and I'm just going to glue it down all the way across the bottom there. Focusing the glue right on those little wire pieces. And this is going to keep those wire pieces from slipping back through and having the twisted part come to the front. So I do that all the way across the bottom and then I cut a couple little squares to go on the back side of the hanger because we don't want that wire scratching up our wall and messing up the paint on our walls. I think this turned out so adorable. I love it. It's so vintage and patriotic and you'll have to let me know what you think about this in the comments below. So I had this spindle. I didn't show you that I painted it this red color, but I'm showing you the original spindle and how I cut it off to make it the length that I wanted to. And so I painted it this red, I believe it's Crimson by Waverly. And then I took white wax by DIY and just scooped a little out and put it on my paper because you're not supposed to put your brush or whatever on your project and keep dipping it back into the jar because it's made with natural products and it can spoil. Um, so I'm just kind of using my finger to rub this on where I want it and I use a lot of different methods to apply this wax but um, and I did a lot of different ones on this particular spindle but I just wiped a little bit of that white on and I, I kind of wanted it to look a little bit more whitewashed rather than it almost turned it kind of pink, but I don't care. I really like how it turned out in the end, so I'm not really, you know, sometimes you start out a project and you want it to look a certain way or you have a certain expectation and then it doesn't quite turn out how you like, how you expected it, but then you like it anyway. So that's kind of what happened with this white wax on here. So I just kept adding how much I wanted and just in certain spots. I didn't want it all over and you'll see. Just watch. I just keep doing it up and down all around and then I decide that I'm going to put some dark wax on it too so I just kept adding the dark wax and the white wax you're gonna see the dark wax shortly um, and so I just kept adding and rubbing it in and and it did keep making it more pink and more pink but I liked it because then it left the dark you know the dark where I didn't get the white and then I just started with the dark wax kind of trying to just make this look a little vintage and a little worn and then I went with the clear wax because I thought well, I got a little too much dark wax so I just went with the clear and the dark and the white back and forth until I got the look that I wanted you know everybody has their own personal preference of how they wanted it maybe you would have not even done this distressing to it maybe you would have liked it just the way it was maybe you would have done more maybe you would have taken some sandpaper to it um, I, that I did toy with that idea but I liked it just the way it turned out and I had these two wood rounds I have a whole bunch of these in my stash because someone gave me a bunch of them after they had a wedding and they knew that I was a crafter and they were just gonna throw them away no give them to me okay so I'm just gonna glue these one to the bottom and one to the top and I'm going to use my super glue, wood glue that I get at Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to use a little hot glue too. Now if you combine those two and you get them mixed up, it will not stick at all. So you have to be careful to put hot glue. Oops, I got a little bit on there. Um, but this is a good way to get a fast hold and a forever hold. So this is how my little, so this was my next DIY. I absolutely loved this chalkboard with the spindles, knew I could recreate it in my own version. So I'm taking the chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree and I'm going to give this little bamboo wood charcuterie board 
two good coats. I gave it two good coats of this black chalk paint. And yes, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It's very important to my channel that you support me and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, leave comments, all the good stuff. Okay, so these little charcuterie boards were from football season at Target and my sister had bought several of them and she, I guess she wasn't going to use them and she gave them to me and to see if I wanted them to craft with. And there were several other things in that box and I was super excited. I love when people give me things that they were going to throw away. So this was kind of a trash to treasure, but it was brand new. I had to take the tag off of it to, um, to do it. But it is that almost bamboo type wood. So it wasn't real smooth, but it turned out great. Okay, now I mixed up my own color paint that I wanted to paint these spindles. These are still part of those spindles that I went and got the, remember when I went and got those 177 spindles? I've mentioned that numerous times on my channel and I'm still using them, still have plenty. I shared some with a fellow YouTube creator that I met up with and um, still have plenty. So I'm going to give both of these spindles a good coat one good coat um, I'm trying to hold it on top of that one so that I can <laughs> get to it without making a mess but I'm just a messy painter I can't help it so I did all of that did this and did that and did this until I got it all painted so it gets all good and painted and I absolutely love this color I'll never be able to mix the same color again but I do like this color. And then once it, they get all painted, both of them, and completely dry, then I'm going to take some of uh, these little balls that are flat on one end. And I think they're supposed to be some type of knob. They're in my stash. I don't even know where they came from, honestly. But I'm going to use some dowels to attach them. Well, first I thought I was going to paint this and I was making a big mess. So I decided to attach them to my spindles before I painted them. So I, I get in my little drill bit box and I find a drill bit that's going to be the same size as these little dowel sticks. Actually, these little dowel sticks were um, paintbrush sticks, paintbrushes that I had thrown away and I just kept the sticks because they were still in good shape. Yes, I'm a craft hoarder. Now I'm going to find the center of this and I'm going to drill a hole that same size in the center. Now, the best way for me to find the center is go corner to corner. Oops, fingernail got in the way. And corner to corner. And where the lines cross is pretty close to the center. Close enough for me. So that's where I'm going to drill my hole. I got a little out of frame here. I apologize. It's kind of hard to work at my station and stay in frame sometimes. So I'm going to stick that, make sure that fits down in there. And it's a perfect fit. A little bit tight had to get my needle nose pliers to pull it out because you know old lady fingers don't have that much strength now I'm going to use some more of that wood glue from Dollar Tree and I'm going to poke that little stick down in there that little dowel down in there as far as it'll go and then we're going to use some wood glue maybe some hot glue I can't remember if I used hot glue or not I may have just used wood glue uh, because this is going to be kind of a little tight fit there. So I don't think it's going to go anywhere until it dries. So I'm putting some of that on the dowel. And then, oops, wait, I decided that I'm going to put some on the flat part too. Which was probably a good idea. Now, I had a little, we had some freezing weather. I'm talking freezing weather for Texas for sure. See, that worked great. And a lot of my paints and adhesives and glues and what have you. Well, everything froze. And some of it ruined when it never thawed out or didn't thaw out right. So that glue was kind of one of those that got thick. And yeah. So anyway, here they are painted. And now I'm taking the dark wax by DIY and doing the same thing kind of I did with it on the candlestick. Just giving it a, like a dry brush almost. And then I will go with an old t-shirt that I cut up to buff that out. And I think that they turned out gorgeous. Love this look. 
I love to do this with the Sawmill Gravy by Dixie Belle, but that was one of my paints that got ruined. Now I'm going to take some white. This is just white chalk paint. Um, this is by Rust-Oleum. And I'm doing more than a dry brush. It's heavier than a dry brush because I want some of that, you know, white chunky paint on there and up on these um, ends of it too. So my little granddaughter was in the craft cottage with me um, when I was doing this and she said, they look like bedposts, Gigi. And I said, well, I guess they kind of are. Or that's how they make bedposts, baby. Anyway, so here she is being my little helper. So she is going to um, prime this, cure this, whatever you call it when you chalk the chalkboard. And it really kind of made a mess because um, it got down in those cracks of that bamboo. But she liked it. She gave it a thumbs up, just like Gigi does. So now we're just going to adhere the chalkboard to the spindles with some hot glue and some wood glue. I'm marking where the spindle is going to stop so I don't get glue everywhere, which I do anyway. But there's that thick wood glue that got thick when I it froze and thawed and... I don't even know. I haven't even gotten into everything to see what all got ruined. But, yeah. It froze, but it's what it is. I don't have um, heat out here yet. Just AC, window AC. So, we're working on it. So, I'm going to just glue this down. I'm kind of making sure that I get the, them both in the same spot. There we go. Um, I was practicing on the back of this with my chalk pen chalk writer so that's why I have my <laughs> my name on the back of it and I'm just going to put this little um, rope twine hanger on the back I'm going to use a little bit of that canvas drop cloth to secure that and then I start trying to write on this thing oh my word I tried chalk but I didn't have any small I didn't have any small all I had was sidewalk chalk so I decided I found the center and then I tried to go from the center out and no, it did not work. It says me new. No, nope, not working. So luckily this comes off with a wet cloth. And then I just went in and just did the best I could. Yep, so then I'm gonna put a little line under it. And then I decide that I don't like this, that I don't I think this looks too modern for this vintagey looking piece. So I just wrote it with my handwriting. And here is how it turned out. And here it is with the spindle. This I hope is just one of those this. little, I don't know if this is a wood, wood plank from Dollar Tree. They have some similar to this, or I had picked up a while back some of these in a package at Ross and they were very inexpensive. They ended up being about 60 cents a piece. So uh, I used some Sawmill Gravy by Dixie Bell, one of my favorite paint colors and I use the DIY dark wax over it which I love those two that combination together I did joy to the world with a decal and the iron-on method again like I'm telling you I'm obsessed with that now that I've discovered it I'm gonna drill some holes in the top for a hanger and I just decided to show you how cute those little curls were because I'm a silly goose and then I'm going to take the DIY dark wax and give it a good coat on this spindle. This is one of those spindles that I have in my stash of 177 spindles. And actually, I've shared a few of my spindles. So, you know, it's dwindling down. I probably still have about mm, 130. <laughs> so, um, if you live in my area and you need a few spindles, just holler at your girl and I'll share um, I got them for free, and I've been doing lots of DIYs with them. They're just fantastic. So I drilled some holes in the spindle. I'm putting some beads. You can just see what I'm doing here. It's just, it's not rocket science. Um, I was going to use that taller piece as my hanger, and then I decided that it was too narrow. I didn't, I didn't really like it. I didn't like how it was working, so I decided to pull that down, and I'll make my hanger um, a little bit differently. I'm going to do it the same way I did on the rustic one in the beginning. Um, be sure that you check out the playlist and go and 
watch all the other creators in this collab. They are fantastic. I'm very honored to be a part of this collab. I've been watching some of these people in this collab, these creators in this collab for a long time, and I feel very honored to be a part of, of it, to be creating with them. And um, some of them are new to me, and I'm so glad that I have met them because I've really enjoyed getting to know them and their channel. So please go and check out their channels, their play, the playlist, and comment so that you can enter to win these great prizes. They are some great prizes. So you can see here that I'm just tying this up to make a hanger. I love this. I feel like it looks like one of those um, signs from like maybe the 1800s where they would put it outside their building to put the name of their business. Um, I forget what that's called. You know, the doctor would put it out or whatever. Let me know if you can tell me what that was. Okay, but. so here I've been collecting these spindles for a while now for this project. And like I said, this is an un unusual project for me to do on my channel or it's just different than anything I've done before. So this was my inspiration on the left and this is my finished project on the right so that you won't get lost on what we're doing here. I started out with these few spindles with this citrus strip spray and I just sprayed these, gave them a good healthy coat of this spray because they had that shiny, like I call it shellac varnish on them. And I'm just wrapping them in some press and seal and I'm gonna leave them for about 24 hours, mostly just because that's how long it took me to get back to them. Then I took them outside and here we go with some of those weird angles and I just rinsed them off with the water hose. Um, you could take a little brush and brush in the little crevices, but I could just rub it out with my fingers. I wanted to show you how easy that was. Now, it did not take all the stain off, but I was okay with that. I was really just trying to get that thick, slick varnish off. So here they are. Then after I got them all cleaned off, I kind of sanded that back part down a little bit. Now I'm taking some acrylic paint in the color Chocolate Sprinkle, and I'm just going to put it on and wipe it off. When we did this back in the day in the 90s, yes, I'm that old, I used to craft in the 90s and the 80s, um, we would do this with white paint and we would call it whitewash. So I'm giving this a brown wash. I'm taking some Chocolate Sprinkle, I'm just painting it on there, not super heavy, like I'm trying to give it a full coat of paint, but I'm painting it on there. And then I'm just taking this paper towel. I think that's a paper towel. Or it might be my little piece of um, t-shirt. Because I use a little scrap piece of t-shirt a lot. Okay, next step I'm going to do with this. And this is what makes this so gorgeous, y'all. I take the DIY white wax. And I just put it on a popsicle stick. And I put a bunch on there. I started out with just a little bit and I decided a little bit wasn't enough. And so I just started smearing a bunch of it on there. Oh my word. I love how this came out. Just wait until you see it all finished. Now there's a lot of spindles to this project. So I didn't show you every single little detail that I did with all of them. I'll try to explain it just as good as I can but you will get the gist of it. So I just did this all up and down and all around this entire spindle until I was happy with how much it did. And sometimes I would put it on there and kind of let it dry a little bit and then go back and wipe it gently in some places and harder in other places. So, you know, everybody has their own personal preference. Some people will say, oh, I would have left it like this or I would have I done that. But you do it however you like it. This is This is how I liked it. You know, I didn't, at first it didn't have enough, so I went back and put some more on. Now this one came off of a ladder back chair, and so you see those slits in there, and I loved that, and so I left it, and so I didn't really do a whole lot to this spindle, except give it a good sanding to give it a little bit more distressing, and cleaned it off, and 
That was pretty much it for this one. I love those slits. Okay, here's our next spindle. I took a little trip about an hour away and went and picked up 177 free spindles. They're two different styles, so you'll probably be seeing lots of spindles in the future. Now, I didn't get a lot of stuff recorded on this video because I thought I was hitting record and didn't or vice versa. And so I painted this spindle all white. I gave it one coat of white completely and it covered really good because it was raw wood. And then I went in with three different colors of red. See, I thought I was hitting record, but I was hitting stop. Or I thought I was hitting stop, but I hit record, vice versa, whatever. But anyway, I just get, did a really, really heavy dry brush on it. And then, see, I'm cleaning up my mess, but I hit record thinking that I was hitting stop. Okay, so then I took my 80 grit sandpaper and I am just going to do a pretty heavy distress till I get back down to that wood grain in a few places. And it really made a mess. And it made my hands really dry too. So don't, don't look at the mess and the condition of my hands in this video, please. I've not had time to go get my nails done, so just don't look at my hands. Just look at the just look at the spindles. Okay, next spindle. I did not spend a lot of time on each spindle because I figured that you would be able to figure it out and you'll be doing if you decide to paint some spindles, you will do them the way that you want to do them. Anyway, so this I'm pretty sure this is um sawmill gravy by Dixie Bell. And so I gave this one coat of this paint and I love this spindle. Look at this spindle with this spiral on it. It is so gorgeous. Then I took the DIY dark wax and I gave it some good dimension. Look how it gets in those crevices y'all. This is beautiful. This, I don't know, every time I would do and I'd be like, oh this one's my favorite. Yeah, I just stayed in here all night one night and just did spindles. So it's funny. I feel like each spindle is a separate DIY in this video. I don't know. But anyway, this was such a different um, type of video for me to do. It really kind of threw me off a little bit. The next spindle that we're going to make is another one of those from the free 177 spindles that I went and got. I'm just using the DIY white wax. And I thought this was going to work out great. But do you see how on that square part, it or the rectangle part, whatever, the, the block part, it, it's a different color almost. It was not um, as porous. And it didn't soak it up. It was more slick. So it didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to. So I had this Antique Wax by Waverly. And I had just had a little bit left in the bottle. So once upon a time, I just added a bunch of water to it to kind of create a stain, like just a watery stain. So I'm kind of using it like a watercolor. So I'm just barely dabbing it with that rag. I'm getting a lot on my rag and I'm just kind of barely dabbing it on there to kind of make it look like a stain or a watery, kind of a watercolor effect. really do anything to this. This is where those little crossbars connected to the leg of the chair and I just kind of sanded over where those are and just sanded down a lot of that stain and I just left that one as is. Okay here's some more I didn't get any video of but I took it outside. I, pa I spray painted it black and I put a tiny little bit of white wax on it and then I just sanded it down. Um, this was one of those rungs on the back of the chair. Like where when you sit, it's on the back of the chair. Um, and I just cut it down. I think this one is really pretty too. Okay. Now, this one is... Uh, this one I just caught my eye. So this was given to me. My cousin brought me this little end table 
that was like mid-century modern and it was like two-tiered. Um, depending on your age, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. It was two-tiered and the top tier was a little shorter than the bottom tier and it had this little rail railing on the top tier. And so I took it apart and I cut this to be the length that I needed it to be. And the minute I saw it, I knew because she brought it to me for the spindles because she knew I was collecting spindles. And so, um, so I did one coat of Fawn by Waverly and now I'm just taking some green. This is a um, Wise Owl One Hour Enamel paint. I can't remember the color, botanical. I think it's something botanical. But I just put it on there and as I was kind of wiping it off, thinking that I was going to do kind of that same effect I've been doing, it was kind of doing that wet distressed thing. So I decided I liked it. So I just went went with it. I just started doing it more and more and more. And then I took a dark, little bit different color green. That first green was more of a blue green, had a little bit of a blue base to it. This one has more of a dark green. It's more of a, I think it's Christmas green by Apple Barrel. And so I just dry brushed some on there and then just lightly wiped where I didn't want it if I got too much. And so I really like how this one turned out. This one was really a happy accident, one of those happy accidents. Because this is not how I envisioned it turning out at all. I guess this is where, oh, then I take a little bit of chocolate sprinkle. Chocolate sprinkle by Apple, Apple Barrel is one of my favorite browns. And so I just, it, it does such a, it's such a nice, uh, deep brown and I just do a little distressing and just barely wipe it and I think it turned out really cute okay do you notice that the spindles are getting shorter and shorter as we go up the tree okay here I'm using my elephant color by um, Waverly and the paint was really thick, so it only took one coat. And this was that spindle that I used the um, that citrus stripper on. And it worked really good. It didn't take all the stain color off, but it took that thick, like shiny shellac finish off. Now I'm using white chalk paint to do a heavy dry brush. I love this effect. I love white dry brushing. I love whitewash. I'm a shabby chic girl at heart and like a country shabby chic. And we, I used to do a lot of this on my crafts with rag, with a rag in the 90s. Okay, next spindle. This is one of those little crossbars on the bottom of a chair between the, the legs of the chair. Like, you know, when you're short like me, you put your feet on this part. And I'm just taking that Sawmill Gravy by Dixie Belle and giving it a little dry brush. And then I'm taking my 80 grit sand block and I'm just going to distress it. A couple little places. And I'm always wiping it clean with my little piece of a t-shirt. And there's that one. That was easy peasy. Now this one, that's another one of those that I use the citrus stripper on. And I'm using this blue by Waverly Chalk Paint. And I put it in those little cups because like my elephant, it gets thick if you don't. So I didn't want the blue to dry out because I don't, I don't use the blue as much. And then of course I did not get this part on camera either. So I'm gonna try to, sh I'm, I'm trying to recreate it for you here. Um, doing a dry brush with the aged gray by Rust-Oleum. Any kind of gray will work. And then I'm gonna take my t-shirt and kind of do that wet distress thing. Once I figured out that I could do that, I just went to town doing that. And I think that, that this, this might be my favorite one. Of course, I'm very partial to blue, so that might be my favorite one. How many times have I said that about them? About every one. Every one's my favorite. <laughs> Except, okay, so I started out with this one like, oh, I didn't like that color paint. It was too bright, or it was too dark. It was too yellow. It was too, it wasn't too dark. It was too bright. 
And then I thought, well, maybe I can just put a little bit on it since I don't have so much paint in my brush. And then I was like, well, let me try this other yellow. Oh, no, that was way too bright. Well, let me see what it looks like on the raw wood. No, okay, let's just wipe it all off. Then I decided I kind of liked how that looked. Let me put some dark DIY wax on it. And I think it looks amazing. It looks old and worn like that paint is just worn off of there. And it turned out amazing. Okay, this, see that ladder back chair over there? That's the one I used one of the, the, the legs off of, and that's gonna be the top of our tree. Okay, here I go measuring. Now measuring and numbers are not my thing. That's where my husband comes in. But at this point in time, it was probably about 1 a.m. and my husband was sound asleep. And I'm out in the craft cottage trying to measure things, finding half of 19 and a quarter or, you know, 17 and three eighths. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I just did the best I could and it turned out fine. I just would try to find the center because we're going to drill holes right there in the center to put a dowel rod up through to secure our tree to. I didn't do all the way to the top because my big old head would have been in the way. Now I'm taking some DI dark wax on this poor old worn out t-shirt that's been used all night on this project and I'm going to just stain this dowel rod so it looks a little darker than just the natural wood. Now I'm going to choose one of those drill bits that is the same size as this dowel rod dowel rod so that I can fit it. I can drill those holes. Come on, you guys know what I'm trying to say, don't you? You're probably trying to help me say it right now while you're watching this video. So I drill the hole, I measure it, it works. Now I have this block of wood. There's an old scrap piece that I, actually this came from the dumpster dive when my mom and I did the dumpster dive um, at behind the cabinet shop. I'll have to, I'm going to have to show you all that video one of these days. Um, okay, so the dowel rod is going to stick in here. And then I'm going to drill holes in all the spindles. I'll just show you this one that I use. A, that It's really hard to drill them. So I started out with a smaller drill bit. And then I take it out. And then I put the bigger drill bit in. And then it makes it much easier to get that drill bit through. My drill, the battery was, both batteries were fully charged, but I just don't have a lot of power. But I have had this drill for probably 10 years. Okay, then I'm gonna slide the spindles down on that dowel rod. Now when they all get, when I get all of them slid on there, then I'm gonna cut that, I do not show you this on camera. I'm going to cut that dowel rod off. Okay, so now they're all on there and we're gonna put some glue in that hole on our block so that that dowel rod is gonna stay in there. This is the super glue wood glue that I get at Dollar Tree and it works great. Now we're gonna lift our tree up, we're gonna stick that dowel in the hole on our block let me scoot it back so you can see. I couldn't get it all in the camera, but there it is. Leave me a comment down below and tell me which spindle you love the best. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much. And remember to be still and know that he is God.